All right, everyone, welcome to lecture 3-1. This lecture is about radiology, and the main reason why I'm providing this lecture is because I intend to show you images of uh, ana anatomical structures using different um, radiological techniques. So this lecture is to give you just a primer on things like x-rays and CT scans, MRIs, ultrasounds, uh, so that you understand how those work and you can understand why the images that uh, are the result of those procedures look the way they do. So the objectives for this lecture are very simple. It's just a matter of becoming familiar with the terminology and um, you know, being able to identify what type of uh, technique is used to produce what image, uh, understanding the um, plane in which you're, you're viewing the image uh, and whether or not uh, different techniques were used to acquire the image, such as contrast agents. So through this lecture, uh, you can look through these slides on your own. You don't need me to sit here and read uh, these slides to you, but take a look at the different uh, techniques, understand uh, that different tissues attenuate these different kinds of signals in different ways and that there's specific terminology we use to uh, describe that process. Uh, also understand that there are advantages and disadvantages to each type of imaging um, uh, uh, technique. Uh, so here's an example of a contrast agent which has been added to the GI tract of an individual. So say somebody uh, has a problem with their uh, GI tract, uh, a, individual uh, can drink a solution of barium or iodine and that will attenuate the x-rays as they pass through the body to a high degree and it will in effect outline the GI tract. So that's uh, important uh, that you recognize uh, that uh, these images are normal, it's just a contrast agent has been added. And so in fact you can see the esophagus here and the esophagus at various points naturally gets pinched uh, by different structures. So here are the arch of the aorta and the uh, bronchial tree behind the heart, as well as portions of the stomach. Uh, so that shape is normal. Uh, so patients, uh, of course, these contrast agents can be added to the venous system. So you can see the uh, pathways of uh, the arteries and veins. And in this case, this person has uh, quite a large uh, aneurysm forming in their splenic artery. You don't know the names of these arteries. I can recognize it, but by the end of the course, you'll be able to recognize that. So in your careers as physical therapists, kinesiologists, etc., you will have patients who come to you with images that have been taken by their radiologist, ordered by their physician, uh, and they will ask you, um, you know, what you see on these images. So you have to be comfortable looking at these images and comfortable enough to say um, potentially that, uh, well, I'm not a radiologist, so I would take the radiologist's advice, uh, yada, yada. Uh, so uh, that is, of course, an option. Being able to say, I don't know, uh, and referring to another expert is an important part of being an expert, knowing where uh, our knowledge is limited. So this is a fun little... Uh, slide here showing you uh, this individual had an x-ray after uh, being shot with a bullet and so the the question here is where is that bullet so an x-ray is a two-dimensional image <clears throat> so you don't know at what depth within the thoracic cavity this bullet's located is it uh, in the lung tissue itself is it uh, stuck on a rib is it in the chest on the uh, uh, stuck in the pectoral muscles who knows? So, of course, you can take multiple x-rays. Here we have a lateral view. It's hard to see where the bullet is, but it's actually back here in the posterior. Uh, so that bullet is actually lodged in the back. But with the CT technique, uh, that takes x-rays in a circular pattern around the individual, and the CT technique, computed uh, tomography, allows you to create a three-dimensional image or cross-sectional images. And so, uh, the slide deck gets into CTs, goes through those advantages. The terminology is similar, uh, but uh, the benefit of CT is that you can change settings after the image has been taken. 
uh, and these settings are called window settings. So you can actually set the baseline, the zero point, uh, so that some tissue is uh, visible, some softer tissue is more visible, uh, whereas in a different window setting it may not be as visible. So another benefit, but also be aware that artifacts can occur. So uh, where is the artifact? What's, uh, what's actually metal? What's an artifact? So these are important issues that a radiologist encounters. So there are considerations, contraindications for all of these different types of imaging. Uh, so it's important to understand that. Ultrasound, of course, uses sound waves uh, with a transducer. And the um, neat thing about ultrasound is that it doesn't use high energy ionizing radiation, but there's also a Doppler effect. So you can detect the directionality of blood flow in a vessel. <clears throat> so there was also phased array ultrasounds where you can have multiple transducers that are detecting the echoes uh, as they bounce off surfaces. So higher energy technique there using multiple uh, generators and transducers. Um, and then moving into uh, MRI and the pros and cons of MRIs. So MRIs um, uh, basically use strong magnets to orient the uh, hydrogen atoms in water molecules. And as those hydrogen atoms relax, uh, they emit energy in the form of radio waves. And so a, uh, the MRI detects these radio waves. There's multiple different timings called, uh, the main ones are called T2 and T1. Uh, and that uh, allows you to see different types of tissue emphasized. Uh, so here's an example of a T1 image on the left and a T2 image on the right. The T2 uh, fluid, water, uh, is particularly highlighted in white, whereas in the T1, uh, water fluid is black. Um, so uh, there are contrast agents, uh, gadolinium for MRI, and um, considerations uh, for MRI. So a lot of physicians use MRI, it's a, it's a very expensive technique, and a lot of physicians use MRIs as a uh, problem-solving modality. <clears throat> they have a patient with some sort of condition, they don't know what's wrong, and so they send the patient to radiology to get an MRI taken to see inside the body. Uh, the problem with this is that uh, there's often a, it, of course, the main problem is expensive. The second problem is that there's often a high false positive rate. There are uh, anatomical variations in all of us, and whether or not that an particular anatomical variation that's observed in an MRI is responsible for the problems that a patient has is uh, sometimes questionable, sometimes not. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, quite obvious. And oftentimes an MRI is just a uh, CYA technique uh, that a physician uses to verify a diagnosis. But um, <clears throat> the uh, MRI technique also consumes a great deal of helium. And helium is a limited, non-renewable uh, uh, resource on the Earth. Uh, it was estimated in 2015 that there was only a 20-year supply of helium left. So as the machine uses the helium to cool the supermagnets, uh, and, and function, some of that helium is inevitably released, and once helium gets into the atmosphere, it floats to the top of our atmosphere where the solar winds blow it uh, out of our atmosphere off the planet, so we cannot get it back. Uh, so helium is a very valuable resource, becoming much more valuable. Uh, so all of these things uh, are considerations, and again, just, you know, if you run through this PowerPoint slide once, uh, you'll probably be good, you'll understand what you need to understand in order to view the images and answer questions about the anatomy based on these images. Alright, see you next time.